Welcome back, boys and girls. Glad to see you guys again. Hope you've been creating in the meantime. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about shoes. And we're going to read a story about shoes before we get started with the project. But as you look at the board, you'll notice we're going to talk a little about contour line later. We're going to talk about line to shape. And then we're going to talk about design, which could include uh, texture and could include patterns. Um, we'll talk a little more about it in just a minute. So we're going to start with a story called Shoes, Shoes, Shoes by Ann Morris. Look at the cover. You'll notice they have on their galoshes shorter rain boots here, their hats, and it looks like uh, some sort of raincoat. Obviously, it's been raining. Maybe you're splashing in the puddles. Today, I uh, had my red rain boots on as well. The sun is starting to come out now, though, so that's kind of nice. So let's start this story. Most of these are pictures. They do have words, but the pictures are quite nice in this book. The first picture you're going to see, what does that building look like? Yeah, you're right. It looks like a shoe, doesn't it? Kind of interesting. We actually used to have one of these buildings like this in Memphis um, that was a shoe store. Ask your parents about it if they um, remember. And um, it was on Lamar. There may be some old pictures online that they could show you with that, but it was quite nice. But it also will remind you of one of the old nursery rhymes. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Sometimes feel like that, right? So interesting building, just a fun little thing to start with. So as we're looking at this picture, obviously someone um, working or out feeding the animals, and it's quite snowy. Do you notice those shoes? Do you know what they're called? Yeah, some snowshoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. So look at this picture. Shoes, shoes, shoes. Those are toe shoes for ballet. Look at this little boy holding up some shoes. They look like they might not fit him. <laughs> and then, of course, you can see these shoes look well worn. Shoes, shoes, all kinds of shoes. Wherever you find them, shoes come in twos. What do we call it when something comes in twos? Think about it. A pair, you're right. So you have a pair of shoes. Old shoes. Look at all these older shoes. They're worn in, they're well loved. New shoes, huh? Yeah, I like to go shoe shopping myself. Look at these with their shoes. And of course, he's got his on the ball. Just right for you, shoes. Work shoes. Ah, look at all the different kinds of work. Can see that different kinds of work require different kinds of shoes. Think about that for a minute. Play shoes. Certain kinds of athletics may require a certain certain type of shoe. Any time of day shoes. Obviously, weather can dictate what kind of shoes you wear as well. 
There are school shoes and dancing shoes. I wonder if they could be the same. walking shoes and riding shoes. Shoes for the ice and shoes for the snow. Hmm. Shoes keep your feet dry wherever you go. Wooden shoes, cloth shoes, shoes made out of straw. Hmm. Interesting, right? Maybe you haven't seen those before. All over the world and lands near and far, there are shoes that are right for wherever you are. Ah, you may not have thought about those. If you're swimming, what do you call those? Flippers, some say uh, your fans. And of course, the end of this shows where all of these pictures came from, which is quite interesting from all around the world. There's some in China and Italy and Thailand, Romania, Morocco, obviously the United States, Bolivia, Mexico, Sweden, Colombia, Netherlands, Kenya. These are just a few. Quite interesting though, right? Perhaps later, if you get a chance, you can look up some other kinds of shoes. Um, maybe have your parents help you, but you could look up work shoes. Maybe plug in a certain type of work. Think about the uniforms that police officers wear, or a fireman, or nurses. Um, think about what kind of shoes you would wear if you're going to the beach. Um, what kind of shoes you might wear if you are going to be somewhere where it's muddy or wet. Uh, think about if you needed to run fast, what kind of shoes you might want to wear. So those are all options. Today we're going to take our ideas about shoes, but we really do need to look at a pair of shoes as we're drawing, and I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. Um, but our goal today is to look at shoes. Now, I drew a shoe using a pencil, but knowing that the camera doesn't quite pick up, just a lot like in the classroom, sometimes I use a hover cam, or sometimes I might use um, a dry erase marker, or something that's a little darker so that you can tell what's going on. But when you're looking at the shoe, I want you to find a starting point and a stopping point. Technically, your starting and stopping point should meet. That would be a contour line where you're traveling all the way around an object. You have a beginning spot and an end. Um, we technically call that when a line continues on and keeps going until it touches itself. Who remembers what this is called? A shape. You're right. Any anytime a space is enclosed with the line, then it creates a shape. So for you, kindergarten, first and second, you may look at it more like a shape. Um, but remember that the shape has a beginning and end. Where are you going to start? Where are you going to stop? So you have to think about that a little bit. Here I drew one with a few more inside lines to show you those details. And I drew it in Sharpie so that you can see that better. But obviously, pencil works nicely on your paper at home. So you may try that. So I started right here. And I looked and I continued every little bump and movement that that shoe made. If it curved up a little bit, if it came back down, if the step moved up, every little bump and movement, I tried. 
tried to recreate, and that's going to be your outside line or your contour line, if you will. Then you're going to go back and just try for a few of those inside lines. You don't have to put as many as I did. I included some stitching, even where a logo is. I don't necessarily always um, suggest recreating the logo just because um, it's another design. And if your shoe already has designs on it, maybe disregard those designs because we're going to create our own design later. So you're going to take this line drawing, and of course I did this one with Sharpie, and then you're going to create a design on top of that. So here I drew a cowboy boot, and I started right here. Typically, I come down the back. For some reason, this time I went up at the top, recreating every little bump and movement. Because when you wear a shoe, it bends and it has different bumps. And then you're going to move along to the bottom and around and back up. And then, of course, I did include some of the stitching just because it was fun. And the separation of where the heel or the bottom of your shoe um, comes in contact with the top, or top part or upper part. Then I recreated... A design that I think is kind of fun, um, sunflowers. Earlier it was um, kind of gloomy, and the sunflowers made me think of something maybe a little more brighter and happy um, to create on the boot. And then, of course, with that blue green color in the background, wouldn't that be a neat shoe? So maybe something that you think would be kind of fun, some kind of design that you find interesting to put on your shoe. So you're going to take your design that you've drawn like this, and then you're going to add things. And of course, this one's sunflowers. Now look at this toe shoe, which is a ballet shoe. That's a little difficult because you're trying to draw it without the foot inside necessarily. Um, technically, um, those ribbon would just fall down to the ground. But I wanted you to be able to tell what it was. Now do you see the design that I put in there? I started with a crayon and just kind of colored in a circle starburst like pattern. So you don't have to draw a circle you can just kind of color in a circular motion outward. And then you go with your second color, and you're just going to kind of go around in a tie-dye fashion. Notice what happens, though, when you get to the edge. You have to stop and maybe pick it back up later. There's another one where I start in the middle, and it kind of goes around like this. Here's one. And you can tell they look like they would just kind of go off the design or off the edge of um, that particular shoe. So our goal today first is to look around for shoes to draw, perhaps even look at some on the internet if that's okay with your parents. Um, secondly, maybe gather a few shoes or those pictures and whatever drawing materials you have at home. Uh, you're going to want to use paper, uh, perhaps pencil, marker, crayons, whatever you have. Right in front of me right now, I have markers over here as well. I have a package of markers and I keep a big these are so old uh, and probably too fast, but I keep a big tin full of crayons. Um, and so that's what I've done on the boot and on the ballet slipper. I just use crayons, and it works quite nicely. And you can get darker and lighter over my colors, whatever it is. Um, if you prefer marker, certainly use marker. So I want to show you about the drawing part right now. Remember I said we would start with a simpler idea with our A, kindergarten, first, perhaps second. Second may be able to recreate because you're almost third graders. So you may be able to recreate some of these. But what you want to first do is find some shoes. And you'll see some of the background. I've got my green boot over here. My dad has some black high heels or stilettos, some baby shoes. Um, in my lap, I've got a tennis shoe and a couple of sandals down on the floor because sandals are really difficult. I'm going to recommend um, if you try sandals, maybe try more than one shoe. Uh, they don't have to be the same shoe. So maybe on your paper, fill it as big as you possibly can and possibly you do two shoes uh, or three if they will fit and make them all different. Um, Challenge yourself, push yourself and find some of those more difficult shoes um, to draw. And sandals are one of those. Sandals are quite difficult to draw. So I'm using a Sharpie just so that you can see it. But remember, it's easier for you to probably start with a pencil, uh, especially if you tend to erase. Now, what I love about contour is that if you're leaving your pencil on the paper, 
and looking at the object, you should be able to recreate that contour line without moving your pencil off the page. Some of you will know about that, especially third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, remember our exercises with blind contour were a lot of fun. Um, because I'm left-handed, this may block some of your view, but I'm gonna try to show you what we are um, doing. So if I were drawing this shoe, I'm gonna start with the path. And I'm gonna, with my eyes, I'm gonna trace around any little bump and movement. So I'm looking with my eyes for little bumps and movement. Now that I know where I want to start and I figure that out, um, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna start at that point. Now, my little guys, if you're at home trying this, don't get discouraged. It's a little challenging to have every little bump and movement. Maybe you don't want to draw all these laces. And you certainly can't see the laces from the front. Do you see how they crisscross each other? For some reason, that is how we tend to draw a shoe, but you want to kind of push it back where you can only see the side. Kind of like we talk about a person has a profile view, it's almost like a profile view of the shoe. Okay, so I'm gonna start right back here. I'm gonna start, I'm moving, my eyes are moving. I feel a little bump and ridge. Draw as big as you can too. That's always nice. So I'm moving up. I'm on top. I can see a few. I'm trying to push it back where I can only see the side. So this is what we call a contour. At this point, if you wanted to, I'm just going to write the word contour. At this point, if you wanted to, you can go back in and add a few detail lines. Don't get too crazy. It can overwhelm you. But the first thing I notice is this little separation right here. I'm going to look and see it in the back very clearly. And then it kind of comes up to this point here. Um, inside of that, there's another little line that goes like this, and it's got little dots or zigzags. But remember, we're not worried about the print or the design because that's it. You're going to be making your own. So at this point, I'm looking. I see that little part that goes over the toes. I see some stitching right here that goes all the way up. Um, there's a hole right here, but you can't see all of it because this lace hangs way down. So I'm just drawing that. Now, if you were drawing with pencil. You could erase parts that don't make sense to you if you want to add in stitching at the top here. It technically goes all the way around. Um, if you want to show where these laces crisscross over, just show where they are. That's going to be in those little bumps and ridges that you were doing earlier. You would have included that. These are like a rectangular shape. You can't see the crisscross part. Now, maybe you see a little bit of one that crosses over, and in that case, you can put the other lace that you see. I see a few sticking up over here, over here as well. So, I would probably leave this one. This would be good to go ahead and put your designs inside. So, let's talk about some of my younger friends. When you're working on this and you're looking at the shoe. Um, do your best to just get this outside line. And you guys are really good at that. You really are determined and you're a good artist. So just continue your process with that. So I'm looking, hopefully you can see my red boot over there. So I'm looking at that. I'm going to go ahead and start that. I'm looking, I'm starting at the top back. So bump right here, kind of bumps out for the heel because the heels of those have some little bumps on them. Then it moves upward. And then you're gonna see a little ridge and this comes all the way up. Now, I will try hard not to see the inside of the boot. The, the direction that I'm sitting, I can see a little of the open top and normally I will draw that, but I'm trying to keep that simple for you guys. So I'm gonna leave that off. I'll also see a buckle right here. So I'm looking for the shape and lines that I might use to recreate that. Notice there's kind of a square buckle. You can see inside, you see this part connects and then this part sticks out. 
on the bottom. I also see that little design. We talked about that when I was drawing. There was a little ridge. Um, all of this is not necessary. You can do it the way that you uh, see, but I'm just including some of those. So there's a gouache, a rain boot, if you will. And this would be ready for designs as well. So I'm looking at a couple more things. So the black hunter shoe back there. I would start at the back, kind of moving inward. I'm looking at my screen if you're wondering. And I move it flat on the floor because that's what it looks like it's showing. And it has a little point to it. So I'm moving up. I can see where that ends right there. And goes up right here. And perhaps you can see the inside. I can from that on the one that I'm looking at. All right. And remember we talked about angles. So let's take a look at this angle. If you have one with a back, I recommend starting at the top of this back right here. Moving down, you see that negative space or what we call empty space. So you're going to come in, come back down, move up, and you're going to see each little bump and ridge until you finally end where you began. Um, if you choose to do a sandal that does not have a back piece, um, then you have a little more to so perhaps you start with this part moving around and up and then you're going to move up and over every time you see that until you eventually get back. Now the problem with a sandal like this is you don't move it all the way back. You can see somewhat in the foot bed and so then you have to draw that as well. Kind of like what I was talking about with the rain boot. And granted I was going a little quickly to show you how it's done. Take your time, slow down, breathe. Um, if you need to draw this a couple of times first to kind of get the hang of it or draw two or three shoes to feel comfortable, that's a great, but my challenge is going to be to take this contour drawing and then put your own spin on it. Like if you wanted to order a pair of tennis shoes, but they had your design on them. So what kind of design are you going to show everybody that you would like to have? So. I'm going to really quickly show you how to draw these two shoes and then we'll talk about the design part. So I'm holding it up. Remember, I talked about that back portion, if there's any little bump or movement. And because I am holding it up, I'm probably going to bump into this other shoe. Yeah, just slightly. It's okay. So that would be the contour, but let's look at what it needs. It has this little sole part, the part of the bottom of the shoe, um, where that brown is a different color brown from the other. Then I can see the footbed here, and I know it's going up, but I've got to watch myself because I don't want to put something on top. So I can see this little buckle right here. And bring that over. Then I can see this one go up and I can see just slightly part of that buckle. Draw what you see. That's a hard thing to, to do, by the way, um, to draw only what you see. You know things cr crisscross and so I think it makes it hard. Now I can see inside of this footbed, so I'm going to draw it. So that is this shoe drawn, and if you were doing something like this sandal, we'll do it this way. Start at that back point. See how I went in and out for that negative space, that empty space that there's nothing there, and this shoe kind of curves up, moves up on the end. I can see. Now that looks strange, but hopefully you can see it. 
So you take this little part of the footbed, moving it around just like this. And we can see this strap curves over onto this side. This moves up as well. We can see a little bit of this moving onto this part as well as here. You don't have to put all the stitching if you don't want to, but if you'd like to, certainly, you know, include some of that stitching if you want. But this is a good start. So now we're to the point of design elements. So what I want you thinking about is some of the things we've already learned this year. I want you thinking about line, of course, which this is included, but you know how line can lead to, if you're repeating it, lead to a pattern. Um, using shapes or lines. Um, remember when a line touches itself, it creates a shape. And if you're repeating those things, then you can do patterns. So perhaps in one of your areas, you decide to do some sort of pattern. So you could draw those in. I'm just doing some zigzag lines. Um, keep in mind that if, if you have something that's your favorite, could be favorite food, favorite color, um, or a cartoon character, something like that, that you can include in one part of your shoe. That would be quite interesting. So here I've just started with some zigzag lines. Perhaps I do um, some circles with a circle inside, making them touch and some go off the page and come back on, um, keeping that pattern contained in this one little section right here. Um, obviously this would look nice in color. So you decide how you want to do that. Um, other things to think about are texture. And we talked about this a little bit before. Um, texture can be when you're trying to recreate a visual texture on your paper, it can be as simple as how something looks, if it looks rough or soft or spiky or a slick surface, which would be difficult to recreate or um, furry, if you will. So be thinking about what kind of lines or how you could recreate that texture in your work. Other things to think about, we talked about patterns and lines and designs and just illustrating other drawings. Maybe you put a theme to your work. So if it's some sort of superhero theme, or maybe your theme has to do with um, being outside on a sunny day or the beach, what kind of things would be in a picture or a design that if you were trying to do, if you were brainstorming for ideas for your beach picture, what would that be? Maybe things like water, of course. Um, other things that make you think of the beach sand, sunshine, my favorite, or a sun, sunrise or sunset over the water, um, a beach umbrella, mm, beach ball, um, bucket and a shovel or a pail, if you will, um, materials to build a sand castle, or you could even draw sand castles. What other things? Starfish, seashells, um, maybe in the water there are fish or a dolphin, something like that. So think about how you can include that. Because I am using this red circle, I'm going to continue. But let's say I decided to do the sunshine on, or the beach one on the rain. That's kind of ironic, isn't it? Um, but so but maybe I'm wishing for it. So maybe I do my sun. Maybe I do my horizon line of water. Maybe there's some sand over here and I can see a palm tree leaning over. There's the palm leaves. I'm not sure if you can see this with the red. It'd be better if it's colored in on it. Um, how about I do like a little tail and shovel for the sand. Maybe there's a beach ball. 
Maybe there's a dolphin jumping up over the water. Flashing around. Maybe there's a sailboat way over way back here. That might look kind of nice in the wind. So you be thinking about what you can include. I certainly can't wait to see these all finished. Remember, they look really nice colored in. I'll remind you of what that looked like a, a minute ago. But I use only crayon, but certainly markers will work. Um, whatever it is that you want to use to add that brilliance, to make it stand out, to make it your own. Um, you can borrow my ideas, of course, but I cannot wait to see some of you guys' uh, ideas. And I could come up with more. I'm sure you will be able to as well. Um, please, don't, don't be afraid to post these on our um, school Facebook page. Heather, can you put some pictures of this? I can't wait to see them. Um, you can also post them on your blog that is on my website that is connected to the White Station site as well. But good luck and happy drawing and creating. I want to see some shoe designs. Maybe I'll want to purchase one with your uh, design on there. Good luck. See you next time. Bye.